photography is all about capturing the perfect shot. Late last night, I came back from a trip to Arizona where I was photographing a spot near the Grand Canyon and I got there and the conditions looked really cool. So I set up the tripod, put my camera on it and started a time lapse going. And there was this storm that was rolling by that had lightning and then the storm passed and then light started pouring into the canyon and it started lighting up the wall. And then that passed and the sun went down and then the clouds started to get pink and there was even a tiny little rainbow. And then I got home, down downloaded the images and I started looking through them. And while the entire experience was really, really, really cool, each one of these photos individually was kind of boring. So I got the idea to blend the best parts of that night into one single photo. In this video, I'm going to be covering exactly how to do that in Adobe Photoshop with time blending. I'm starting off in Adobe Lightroom here and you can see I have eight different photos from this evening all open in Lightroom. I'm gonna quickly go through them and kind of cover them. This first one I love because I had this beautiful lightning strike here on the right hand side. Moving over, I have another one with a tiny little lightning strike right here, a little baby one. And then this next photo, we can see the light coming in. It's just starting to light up the side of the canyon. The next photo, it's lighting up a little bit more. And the next photo, I like this because the sun is kind of going down and there's just that last little bit of light on the canyon. And back here, now this section of the canyon also has light on it, which it didn't in the previous shots. And then the next one, this butte back here also is getting some light on it. And then this last photo, the skies are turning pink. And then back here, I have this tiny sliver little hint of a rainbow here. What I'm gonna do is click on this first photo, hold down shift and click on the last photo that's gonna select all of them. I'm gonna go up to photo, down to edit in, and then not edit in Adobe Photoshop. That's gonna open these all up as separate files. I don't want that. Instead, I'm gonna go down to open as layers in Photoshop. Now I've got all of my images opened as layers in Adobe Photoshop, and I can begin the process of blending these images together. In this case, I'm going to use this bottom layer as my base layer, and I'm going to reveal just that one by holding down the option key and clicking on this little eyeball here that's gonna turn off all these other layers. And then I can go through one by one and add just the parts I want to on top of this base layer for all of these other layers. So I'm gonna click on this first base layer here. I can see that's the one with the lightning bolt and I really like that. The rest of the canyon is very blank. There's no weird color casts and there's no light in this. So it's gonna work very well for adding light into it with the rest of the layers. I'm gonna click on the second layer here and I can open that and reveal that one has a little bit of a lightning bolt right here. And I want to include that to add drama to the photo. So I'm gonna create a black layer mask. And we know in masking, black conceals and white reveals. So if I add a black layer mask, then I can add a little bit of white in there with a brush to reveal this lightning strike. To create a black layer mask, I'm gonna hold down the Option key or Alt if you're in Windows, and then go down to add a layer mask button right here. I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna create a black layer mask. I'm gonna hit B for brush change my color swatch to white from black. I'm gonna to go to my settings. I'm gonna make sure my hardness is at zero to make sure that's very feathered edge and it blends together nicely. I'm gonna make the brush size a little bit smaller with the left bracket key. And I'm simply going to brush in that little lightning bolt right there. So we can see the before and after and it blends together nicely. Let's zoom on out and then we can go to our next photo or our next layer here and reveal that. And I can see this is the one where I have a little bit of light coming into the canyon. This is when the sun first started to break through the clouds. I'm gonna zoom in over here and just like before, create a black layer mask, hit B for brush, make sure I'm on white. And this time I'm gonna change the flow down a little bit lower, somewhere around 20%. And I'm just gonna start brushing in a little bit of light just at the bottom of the canyon here. And I'm gonna be a little bit sparing on the left-hand side. I don't want that left-hand side to become too bright and take away or distract from the main point of the canyon. I'm then going to reveal the layer on top of that, which has even more light. And just like before, I'm gonna create a layer mask and then just slowly brush in a little bit of that light on the canyon. Again, just the same process just like before. In this case, it's a little bit too bright on the left-hand side, so I'm gonna completely ignore that and just focus on brushing in on the right-hand side here. So just like before, add a layer mask, 
And in this case, I'm gonna take the flow down really, really, really low, somewhere around 5%, and then I can just brush in very sparingly over the right-hand side. I'm gonna reveal the next layer, and in this one, I like this light hitting just this part of the canyon way back there. So again, I'm gonna add a layer mask, and then just reveal that section of light in the photo. Looking at this photo, I really like how this next one has the light hitting this butte in the background. Again, add a layer mask. I'm gonna make my brush size a little bit smaller. Brush in the light on top of that. And I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger to select more of the sky here. And then see this top layer. And I like, I have a little bit of a rainbow, just a baby, baby a bit right there and some kind of pinkish clouds going on over here. So I can, again, create a layer mask, increase my brush size, and then just brush in just like so. And I can say that rainbow is somewhere in here. I can just start brushing and revealing that little baby bit of a rainbow. It's not a whole lot, but it does add something to the photo. And I can zoom on out and then compare this by holding down option and clicking on this last layer. And I can see that here's the before with just the single layer. And here's the after with all of these images blended together. From here, I can add like a curves adjustment layer and add some contrast to my photo kind of as a final touch. Maybe go up on the highlights and then bring down those mid tones in the shadows. And I can say that's good. So we're gonna confirm that. And again, we're gonna look at this before and after, before and after. I think it's so cool how you can blend together or meld multiple moments into a single shot. I've got one more shot to show you though, and this one is a little bit more complicated. So again, we're here in Lightroom and I've got a couple of images open. So I'm gonna click and expand that. This is taken from the iconic Bandon Beach in Southern Oregon. I was leading a workshop here with my buddy, Kevin McNeil, and I had a few moments to myself. So I had my camera, no tripod. I was just holding it above the waves and doing a continuous shutter and just having those waves come at me and was holding it down low. And then when the waves got too close, I was lifting it up. And I was just trying to get the most action or the most drama in the photo. So in this first photo, what I love is that this wave is coming right at me and it almost works kind of to ground the image and I have a lot of darkness down here. I got a little bit of sea foam, got this nice wave coming at me and it almost works like a leading line, how it's coming from the left, going up over to the right. I got a little bit of a splash and then it's kind of hooking your eye back around to the main focus point of the image, which is the sea stacks and this nice sunset going on. The next photo has a lot more drama in it. The waves are really coming at me on this one. And you can see it's a little bit askew compared to the first one because it was handheld. And then what I really love in the second photo is this sea spray or this big splash against the rock here. What I don't love about this second photo is that all of this down here is blending together and there's not a lot of separation. Whereas in this first photo, there is more separation. We have this nice line, that, which gives us another layer. So there's black, white, and then it goes to the ocean. And then we have the sea stacks behind it. And then in the second photo, we just have the ocean and the sea stacks. So what I want to do is take this splash from the second photo and combine it with the first photo because I love that drama from the sea splash, but I love the foreground in this first image. Just like before, I'm going to select both of these photos, photo, edit in, and open as layers in Photoshop. I now have both of these photos opened as layers in Photoshop and I'm going to take this top layer and move it down to the bottom and use as my base layer because this is what I'm going to be using for the main part of the photo and I'm only going to be using this second part for the wave splash here. And because I only want this section of the photo, I can go ahead and actually just delete the rest around it. And I can do so by going over to my left hand side in the top of the toolbar and selecting the elliptical marquee tool I'm gonna create a big selection right over this wave splash. And then I'm going to invert the selection by holding down Shift, Command, and I. That's gonna invert it. And then I can hit the Delete key and that's going to delete everything else around it. I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect that. And then you can notice, of course, that because this was handheld, it doesn't quite match up with the rest of the photo. So to easily align this, I'm going to select the first photo select the next one, and then go up to edit, and then down to auto align layers. 
I'm gonna leave the projection on auto and hit okay. Photoshop does its best job to align this layer with the one below it. And this is actually one of the reasons why I deleted everything around this way of splash. This is like the 15th time I've tried recording this and this auto align layer has not worked at all. It's been super annoying. So we're gonna probably have to do a little bit of this by hand. I'm gonna to toggle off this top layer and see how well it matches up. And it looks like it does a pretty decent job, but maybe not 100%. So to make sure this aligns as best as it can, I'm actually going to change the blend mode of this top layer from normal down to difference. And then that's going to show me the difference in the photos, or it's going to give me this kind of negative overlay. And from here, I can move around this top layer. And the goal is to have it be completely black or as black as possible compared to the surrounding image. So I'm gonna kind of turn this, I'm gonna hit Command T to transform, and I have to kind of rotate this a little bit. I don't care if these rocks on the side are not matched up, I only want this main rock to be in place and aligned. So then I can just kind of use the arrow key to move this down a little bit. And I'm gonna say this is probably as close as I'm gonna get. I'm gonna change my blend mode from difference back to normal, hit enter, and I can say, that's probably about as aligned as I'm gonna get. So just like before, we're going to add a layer mask to this and brush in the wave. Again, I'm gonna select this layer, hold down Alt or Option and add a layer mask, and then hit B for brush. In this case, I'm gonna change my flow back up to 100. I want to keep my hardness at zero, make sure I have white selected, and then I can simply brush in this nice ocean spray on top of the image here just like so. I can see that I'm starting to reveal the edge of this second layer. I don't want that. So I'm gonna switch my color swatch back to black and then brush that out and away. So I can do this. I can kind of clean up this edge here. I'm gonna zoom in, make my brush size smaller and just brush this edge away to clean that up. And then I'm gonna zoom out and I can see, looking at this a little bit bigger, it doesn't quite match up 100% down here. Let's see if we can change the flow down a little bit, somewhere around 25%. And then I can just brush away a little bit of this spray so it blends a little bit better with the rest of the image. And I can say that looks pretty natural. I'm gonna zoom back out here and then we can toggle this off and then on again, off and then on. I really love how in the finished photo, I have this nice wave coming at me and I also have the drama of this splash on the right hand side and then the nice sea stacks and sunset in the background. Time blending is a super useful technique. Is it cheating? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.